Hi, I'm Nathan Ferrier. I'm a senior at Weber State University in the Field Service Operations Program, and this is my capstone project. I started this project out with a question, which I based all my research on and conclusions. So my question was, is Lucas Fuel Injector Cleaner Additive effective in improving fuel injector flow? I wanted to um, research this, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to do that because every, as a car enthusiast, every time I go to you know, AutoZone or Napa or any other parts store, they're always trying to sell you this stuff. And I've also, being in the automotive profession, had a lot of people ask my opinion on this, this particular additive. Does it work? Is it effective? Is it worth the five or six bucks they try to sell it to you for? So I wanted to figure out if it really was um, effective and worth the money, was uh, my goal in this project. So uh, here's our product right here. Comes in a little little six ounce bottle, um, also known as tune up in a bottle. Um, picked this particular Lucas out of all the others because it seemed to be the most popular. It seems to be the one they're always trying to sell you. So I was curious. Um, thought it would be best to use one of the more popular brands to see if it was effective or not. Okay, so here's what the product claims it does. I took this straight from Lucas's fuel, um, fuel injector cleaner additive website. Um, they claim it is, it's designed to increase power and fuel mileage and also lower exhaust emissions through a more complete combustion process. Here's how they claim it accomplishes that. They claim it gives your fuel system what it really needs, a blend of super slick oils and additives with a higher high detergent action that allows the engine to operate at maximum efficiency. Once again, this is straight from Lucas's website. Furthermore, they claim it cleans and lubricates the carburetor or injectors and increases power while reducing fuel consumption. Okay, so here's just the process that I followed while uh, doing research, testing, experimenting, um, the whole whole flow of the whole project. This is the this is the process I followed to ensure that I came up with consistent and accurate results. So I started out just by formulating my question, um, went ahead and went into the hypothesis process and experimentation, compared my results. And then I formulated a conclusion. Tried to mirror this really close to the scientific inquiry process so that I ensure that I came up with really um, consistent and accurate results with my goal. Okay, so um, this guy here, he always reminds me of a hypothesis, so I thought he'd be a good, good way to segue into the hypothesis section. Okay, so here's my hypothesis for this um, experiment. Um, if, if one measures the amount of fuel that flows through the injectors before and after Lucas fuel injector cleaner is installed, they should be able to determine its effectiveness. So that's my hypothesis. My prediction going into this project was that the use of this fuel injector additive would have little to no effect at all um, in the fuel injector flow rate. Okay? It's, a, it's a little six ounce bottle, you're, you're diluting it down in 20 gallons of fuel, I, I just don't see it working that well. Okay, so here are my test vehicles that I chose for this project. The one on the right is a 2003 Ford F-150, the 5.4 liter Triton engine. It has approximately 85,000 miles on it. That's my own personal vehicle. And the one here to the left is the 2003 Explorer Sport Track. The four liter engine has approximately 125,000 miles on it. It's my roommate's truck. Okay, so here's just a, my experiment plan. I, I, I went ahead before I did any testing at all, I wrote up step by step, very detailed, what I was going to do. So I ensured that I did both um, the exact same testing on both vehicles and made sure that I stayed very consistent and came up with the best, me best method to come up with some accurate and consistent results. The very first thing I did, very simple, I just filled the fuel tank up. Um, what I did ensure with both vehicles is that I was using the exact same uh, fuel station, fuel pump, fuel grade, um, just to make sure that fuel wasn't really coming in as a factor, as much as I could um, prevent it anyway, um, of affecting any of my results. So 
Next thing I did is I went ahead and connected the IDS to the data link connector. Um, IDS, for those who may not be familiar, is the integrated diagnostic software. This is what Ford uses for their diagnostic software. Um, it has the VCM, vehicle communication module, which um, interfaces between the vehicle data link connector and the uh, laptop computer scan tool itself. So this is what I used for a lot of the testing to uh, get my results, measure, make measurements, things of that nature. Okay, before I get too started, what I wanted to really make sure of is that both vehicles were operating properly. They didn't have any drivability related concerns that may cause some inaccurate readings or even inconsistent readings such as a misfire or a run rich or lean condition that um, could affect my readings there. So what I went ahead and did first is just ran an on-demand self-test on the PCM, made sure that I didn't have any DTCs or anything that indicated concern. Um, I found no DTCs in either vehicle. And then I went ahead and uh, checked my mode six data on both vehicles. Made sure that um, still, then again, I still didn't have any misfire counts, any evaporative emissions concerns, anything of that nature. Okay, and everything checked out to the top shape there. Um, next thing I went ahead and did is I went into PCM Data Logger and I monitored my fuel trims. Made sure that, uh, once again, it wasn't running rich or lean at that time. So. Here's actually a screenshot of my data logger that I did on the 2003 F-150. Um, as you can see at the top there, that cylinder head temperature is 192 Fahrenheit, so run about operating temperature there and my long-term fuel trims there next and uh, my short-term fuel trims there at the bottom. The long-term fuel trims are running about 3%, which is pretty close to zero, and as well as my uh, short-term fuel trims are just running the one to 3% range. So everything seems to be operating properly at this time, so we're, we're good to go ahead and continue with the measurements at this time. Here is my Mode 6 data as well. Um, just went ahead and double check, make sure that there was no, no issues at this point. Um, check my uh, miss misfire rates and counts, um, very, very low. Um, almost nothing at all, so my, this truck is running in tip-top shape at this point. In addition, my, uh, my O2 sensors are, have been switching properly, so really nothing going on that would cause a concern at this point. Here's the uh, Mode 6 data for the Explorer Sport Track. Um, once again, very low misfire rates here to the left. Um, and the O2 sensors are switching properly. Everything appears to be operating properly on this engine. Okay, so here's the, furthermore, what we went ahead and did proceeding with the experiment. We went ahead and just performed the fuel injector flow test once we were sure that the engines were operating properly. Um, what, what we did was perform the flow test. What this test is doing for us is we created a baseline reading of of the fuel injector flow before we ever added any additives so that we can kind of compare the results later after we've used the additive through the system. So we went ahead, I went ahead and did this test twice just to make sure that there was no, you know, inconsistent results, make sure I didn't have like a, you know, a high reading just prematurely or anything like that due to an air pocket and a fuel rail or anything of that nature. So I repeated it twice and came up with like the exact same results. So I went ahead and stopped there after I did it, did it twice. These are the results of the fuel injector flow test on the 2003 F-150. Um, as you can see, pretty even across the board. Um, averages out to about 125 milliseconds. Just a little bit more there to the right, uh, all the way to the right, it flowed at 127 milliseconds. How this test actually works is it counts the length of time it needs to keep the fuel injector energized until it sees a certain amount of pressure drop in the fuel rail. So the longer the injector has to be on, the higher the millisecond count, the more restricted the fuel injector is, is the theory behind this test. So pretty consistent, all within the arrow ranges. Don't really see any concerns at this time. Maybe another than on the one on the right, it's just down maybe a couple milliseconds, but overall pretty good. Here's the results on the uh, sport track. Um, once again, pretty consistent across the board. He's running around 136 and a half milliseconds is the average all the way across the board. A little up and down, but overall we're well within the arrow ranges. Really no concerns found at that point. Okay, so continuing with the test, next thing we did is we just went, I went ahead and added the fuel injector cleaner. Um, what I did want to make sure of is I want to get the most out of this product that I possibly could. So I read the label really well and just followed the instructions on the label exactly, such as installing the 
the, the additive right before you um, fill the fuel tank to ensure that you mix it in thoroughly with the fuel. So, the next part was really the easy part. All I did was uh, drive the vehicle, make sure until uh, we used up the fuel. So, really quite simple. Okay, so here's just a picture, um, adding the additive there into the fuel tank, and there to the right you'll see um, that's actually performing the fuel injector flow test. Um, the, what, you, what I'm actually doing there is purging the fuel rail of any air pockets so it doesn't affect our fuel pressure transducer um, readings. So that's why it's hooked up to the gas can there. Okay, so all the steps that we basically just did on the F-150, I went ahead and repeated on the Explorer Sport Track um, so that I could make my comparison. I was very, very careful to perform the steps in the exact same manner, exact same method, so I came up with very consistent results, which is my goal there. Okay, so here's part two of my um, experiment. Um, I did like this picture here, especially the uh, top two pictures with it was comparing the dirty to clean fuel injector there. You really see the uh, clean fuel injector has a lot wider of a spray pattern, which really helps the fuel to atomize better and cause a more complete combustion process compared to the one on the right where it stays more liquid and definitely pulling a lot less fuel through that injector. So um, definitely can see a difference there in how a clogged fuel injector could give you some concerns. And if this product is effective in cleaning the fuel injectors, um, it could definitely improve uh, horsepower and fuel injector fill. Okay, so once the fuel injector cleaner was installed, we were driven. We, we actually drove the vehicles basically until we were on E and almost until the fuel tank was almost completely empty, just to ensure that we ran this additive completely through our fuel tanks to make sure that we had, had sufficient amount of time to work and we ran through the entire fuel system was our goal there. Okay, so uh, here's a uh, the result of the fuel injector flow on the F-150 after the additive has been ran through it. So as you can see, um, very little change in the fuel injector flow for, between the first results, pre-added, pre adding the additive, and then post-adding adding the additive here. Um, what we've actually got, um, our numbers actually went just slightly by a couple of milliseconds, actually went up to the average. Um, we were about 125 before, and now it's averaging out to about 127 and a half. So um, a little bit up, a little bit uh, actually the wrong direction because this would indicate that the fuel injector flow actually went slightly down. Um, my thoughts on this are that it's likely just the difference, very slight difference in um, the diagnostic equipment um, and accuracies. You will get just a, a slight variation there. So that's my results for this. I'm, I'm really thinking that basically this is going to be pretty close to the exact same flow rate for the fuel injectors. So saw very little, if no change, on this vehicle. Okay, here's the second vehicle, um, the Sport Track. Um, this had almost no change at all. It might have went up an average of one millisecond. We were averaging about 136 and a half before. We're at about 137 right now. Very consistent. Did not change at all on this vehicle, which is helping support that this product did not change anything. So that being said, my conclusion um, for this project is um, the fuel injector cleaner was not effective in, um, in increasing my fuel injector flow rate at all. I could definitely see this varying depending on the amount of uh, how clogged your injectors were. So if you had a higher mileage vehicle, potentially this may be more effective. Um, another possibility too, what I would have really liked to have done if I had more time and uh, just for a wider scope of this project if I wanted to really determine is this effective at all on any vehicles under any circumstance. I would have probably wanted a larger sampling of vehicles, um, I would say at least 20. Um, with all varying different amounts of mileage rates, I would really like probably a couple that had over 200,000 miles on them so I knew that there should be some more carbon build up on the injectors and actually repeat this test on all of those vehicles and see what my results are there and compare and contrast them at that point. Um, but with the data that I gathered in this project, my conclusion is that this additive does not improve fuel injector flow at all. So at this point with these results, looks like a waste of money at this point. So 
This concludes my project um, so and my capstone course. Thank you.